In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up the basics of a combat system, where you too can have a world where you can kill other players. I'm sorry, I'm not going to explain how these bows work at this time. Maybe later. Okay, back in Unity, let's create our game object we'll use for our combat system. Name it however you want. Uh, as usual, reset the position, and now add a VRC combat system. Alright, let's go over some of the parameters here. First one, max player health. I've always left it at 100, but you can have more or less depending on your needs. Respawn on death. I'm going to be honest, I have always left this check and I have no idea what it does when you uncheck it. So let's skip that for now. Respawn point. If you leave this as none, whenever a player dies, they will respawn at their exact location. But if you add a game object, so like a transform into this, they will then, after this respawn time limit, they will then be teleported to that location. Which, moving to the next one, respawn time. How long do you want them to be dead? So when somebody dies, their body goes all ragdoll physics, and you know, they're just dropping there until this time limit. Five seconds is pretty good, but you can lower it to zero so it's instant, or just make it like 10 seconds, five minutes, you know, how long you wanna punish people for dying. Next, reset health on respawn, click that. If you don't, when somebody dies, they will have zero health on respawn, and they can't technically die again until you give them health. So it's kind of easy to just click this so that they always get their health back. Next, visual damage prefab. Basically, when somebody dies, an object that like appears over their screen, and this is the game object that'll do it, it's kind of weird to mess with, so I'm just going to say leave it as none, because it has a default one that looks... I'm going to say like a bloody eye, not bloody, but like red tinted. And so it's good enough as it is. The actual game object is inside here. So if you type in visual damage, so player visual damage, you'll get to see like this texture. Last things here, if you want something to happen on a specific event, say like when a player is killed, when a player is healed, when a player is damaged, you can make a custom trigger, drag the game object in here, and then select that trigger in this drop-down. I'll do that at the end of this tutorial, just to show you what it's like. Now, let's create the object that actually inflicts damage on the player. Create a new object. Eh, for this, I'm just going to make a cube. Reset that. So now it's on the floor. Let's move it forward some. Let's move it up. Also, so it is not on the spawn point, because there's a reason for that. Next, I'm just going to check is trigger. This is not necessary, but just the way I'm doing it for this one. Let's add a VRC trigger. I'm going to click the advanced checkbox, add a on enter trigger, click add. Because of this advanced, I'm going to click this drop down, go to local, so it only affects the player that touches it, not everybody at once, because, you know, if one person touches it, you don't want to kill everyone. Next, layers, go to player local. And in here, go to basic events, add damage. Click on this. And now here's the weird but important part. Receivers, you cannot have an empty list. You must have plus none. Don't put any game objects in here. The SDK documentation actually says that if it is empty and then by none, it will target the player. But if it's an empty list, it won't do anything. So that's kind of annoying. Last, however much damage you want to do, which for this case, I'm just going to set it to 100, so it's an instant kill. Because this object is not going to be moving, I'm just going to go back inside the uh, this combat system and drag the spawn point. So now I'm not going to be right next to it every single time I die and then, you know, spawn back and die again. So moving to the spawn point. Another thing with the spawn point, if you wanted something that was like team based, sadly, there is only one spawn point that you can put in here. You can do weird logic so that, oh, if you click a button, it enables another object so that when they die, so then like on player killed, it'll activate this thing, which then whichever one was activated, it will then activate the teleport to a different location. Yeah, that's overly complicated. You can just create an animation so that if, say, you have a join trigger for like a team, you can then just set animation, move spawn point. I did it in one of my maps and it's much easier thought wise. Okay, in VR chat now, I spawned, got that box in front of me, let's uh, go touch it. Oh, and now I'm dead. Here's that texture I was talking about. You can see my body down there doing ragdoll physics, and, and back at spawn. So yeah, that's all you need for a damage component. 
Next, I'm just going to show you some of the more advanced things you can do with it. Ragdoll physics. Back in Unity, I'll show you now how to move the spawn point for like a team-based system. First, I'll create an object for just hierarchy organization. Let's call it spawn, or no, let's call it team buttons. So now I'm going to create a cube. This is just going to be, let's say like team one. Let's move it up to Y. I'm not going to have it at spawn. Well, whatever. Let's move the overall thing here back one. Add a VR trigger. I'm going to duplicate this later, so that's why I'm doing this now. What am I looking for? On interact, advanced, local. So now only this person will do it. I'll leave the event off for now because nothing's set up. And so for this one, let's just color it green. This is an unlit texture, so we just now have a green cube. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move it over one. I'm going to then color this one blue. I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to put that over there and color it red. And just for organization, let's rename these to red team. I can click it. Blue team. And last, no team. They obviously don't do anything yet, so let's create an animation to move the spawn point. I'm clicking on the descriptor because that's controlling the spawn point. It's the parent of it. So let's go in here, create a new folder, spawn, or team spawn mover. Doesn't matter what you name it. Let's add a new animation controller. Now I'll drag this onto the descriptor. I'm going to go over here to animations. It has a new clip. Let's create a new one. I'm going to call this one no team. Basically, this is just going to say don't do anything to the spawn. So spawn's just going to stay right there. Good enough for the animation. So it makes no team. Next, let's go here, create a new clip. Let's call this red team. Doing this out of order. Press the record button because that's how I'm going to do it. So red, let's put red over here. Uh, now over there. And so, actually, I forgot to change that. So right now, the uh, spawn point is facing Z direction and it's facing the cube. So that's good enough. Create a new one, blue team. Press the record button, find that. Move the spawn over here. This time, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees if I can get my mouse to go that way or sorry, 180 degrees. So now, if you look at it, Z direction facing the cube, which then reminds me that I need to rotate this wrong one, rotate this one 90 degrees so that it is actually facing the cube when you spawn. Wait, did it not do it? There we go. Okay, so we have the animations for moving the spawn point, but now let's actually set up the animation controller. So default, no team. If you have red team, you go red team. Otherwise, you go blue team. So I am going to add an int here. Say team. Yeah, I'm overcomplicating this. <laughs> so I'm going to put these here. So make transition. So any state. And I'm going to have it go to team equal to zero. Make transition. Let's say when team equal to one. Make transition team equal to two. There. So this will be kind of annoying but like a transition time period so let's just move this time so there's no like transition on these. So now we have the animation controller set up but nothing happens like or nothing tells it to do it. So let's go back to the buttons here. So on blue, we said number two. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go here, basic event, add animation int. Click this button, variable, I called it team. And since this is for the blue button, I'm going to say two. 
click the plus sign, I'm going to drag the descriptor inside there. And so now we have it set, so it goes to team two. I'll click next, team zero. Click the plus sign, continue to talk so it's not just dead silence. And then I do it again. Plus sign, descriptor. There we go. All of them are now affecting spawn. Okay, in VR chat again, I spawned, facing the cube, got the buttons behind me, so I should be default to the green no team. So if I go here, kill myself, I definitely should have lowered the time limit so that I didn't just wait five seconds, wasting your time. Oh, spawn in front of the cube again. Okay, so if I go here, click the blue team, I have no indicator, but if I kill myself again, again, wasting your time with five seconds here, what is going on? Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but hey, you notice I spawned on this side. So let's go and uh, click this one. I'm assuming it's because of weird teleportation bugs, but I'm just going to be on this side of the cube and kill myself again. And again, waste five seconds. And hey, I spawned over here. The last thing I'll show is how to add something for these on-player killed, hit, healed, and damage triggers. So, first thing, setting this to 1, just so that I don't waste more time. I'll reuse this component, VR chat trigger, add custom, make it local, and call this one healed. Basic event, same game object, I'll just do toggle. I don't have an example yet, but I'll just add two more. So this one, damaged, and killed. So set this to local, set this one to local, and I'll just take these since they're already colored, move them outside of this, I'll move them over here, put them above, uh, let's rename this so healed, killed, uh, damaged. Select all of them, remove these because I don't want those in there for now. And so, team button. So, when I'm healed, I'll get, click this one. So I can click these. So, on healed, I'll toggle the healed one. On damaged, I will toggle damaged. On killed, I will toggle killed. Next, go to the combat system. I will drag the team buttons into each one of these slots. So player killed goes to killed. On player healed, I'll go to healed. On player damaged, I'll go to damaged. Next, one other thing. We have no way actually checking specifically damage and healed. So let's... I'm going to take these two. I'm going to duplicate them again. I'm going to move them over here take red team and I'm going to call this heal and then I'm going to call this damage just so we can differentiate did I do the wrong ones I did um yeah sure red's going to heal green's going to damage makes no sense on interact remove this one I'm going to then add for damage I'm going to add damage Set the player to none. I'm just going to put this to 25. On heal, remove, click health, plus 25. There we go. So back in VR chat, we got the buttons up there to show our different items. As I said, red is heal. So if I press this, green will disappear, but green did not disappear. Click it again, nothing happened. Oh, max health is 100. So first, damage myself. Oh. Blue disappeared. Press this one. Green disappeared. Can't press it again, so you can't go past max. That's good to know. Oh, it disappeared again. And kill myself. And now they're all gone. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to show off for this tutorial. As a reminder, you don't need to use a static cube like I did. It can be moving around like I showed in the beginning with my archery map. I have experienced some strange issues when turning the damage colliders on and off. So try your best to always keep them enabled and just kind of move them far away when they're not meant to damage other players. 
I look forward to seeing all the new combat-enabled maps, and thanks for watching.